When I was a kid, my dad found a fox. It had been hit by a car and couldn't walk anymore. My mum would spare, of course. Made him keep it in the shed. He was already slipping away from us then. He spent hours with that fox. Telling it all about Italy and the villages they bombed there. I was... I was jealous, I think. That the fox got more of my dad than I did. But it was dying, that was clear. So one day, I snuck out. Took it a sandwich for food. I was only eight. When it bit me, I remember the anger, the shock, the hurt. Running in, screaming from the garden. My mum panicking about rabies. My dad beat it to death with a spade. Later I found him crying. It done a Ken son. That's what he said. And Donna Kennett was hurting you. That's just a poor, dumb, dying animal. It doesn't know it's hurting us. Christ help us, it's left the valley. It's everywhere now. It's been three hours since the planes went over. I haven't been able to reach anyone on the short wave. I'm beginning to think I may have made a terrible miscalculation. from me. You've made me do things I never even thought I was capable of. But if you think I'm coming with you... Kate? Wait. Stop. Kate. This is Catherine Collins. I don't know if anyone will ever hear this. It's all over. I'm the only one left.
I watched a butterfly dancing in a strip of sunlight. All of its life contained in a single day. The blink of an eye between the ebb of the darkening tide. Lying there with the pattern curled around me, I saw the inevitability, the necessity of presence born from absence, the constant unfolding. watched the pattern lean in and time slow to almost nothing. I saw the flame leap from Stephen's hand and the moment hang in the air forever. I watched his face. And in the last second, I almost believe he saw me. He wasn't frightened or angry. I remember his expression. Just like I remember it from the first time, early that morning when he woke and still half sleeping said, God, I love you. And I loved him as he entered the fire. And I let him go, knowing I wasn't ready to join him. We have held time to ourselves here in this place held the light to the ground because we were afraid of the coming dark. But now we understand that to cling to the light is not living. I've spent my life watching the illumination from a million dead stars reaching for me without grasping this meaning. The light we cast transcends our death. The pattern made by our living creates a bridge across the dark. over the valley and consumes the world. Everything is light now. Everything has come to rest. The world is scored by the traces we carved into it. Our presence is everywhere. The bridge joining our stories. This world existed before we came to it and it will continue without us. In the empty fields and houses, our traces radiate and others will come to dance in the light we cast. We can slip away gently, unafraid, knowing that everything will continue. <laughs> 